opportunity to speak and talk about some of the research that I've carried out in the course of my PhD thesis. Uh, my name is Elaine Goff. I'm a PhD candidate for the Centre for Crop Health here at University of Southern Queensland. And the title of my presentation is Mycorrhizal Fungi Improve Yield, Biomass and Nitrogen Fixation by Rhizobia, but Increase Population Densities of the Root Lesion Nematode, Cradolinchus thornii in Mungbeam. So it's a lot to take in in that title, but I'll break down um, organism by organism and the host crop. So a little bit about information about our, uh, our mung bean and the produ production up here in the subtropical grains region. It's a short season, high value summer crop. It's been integrated into cereal rotations um, and can take you know, up to about 70 to 90 days to harvest. So it really is quite quick. And on a good crop, you can get between $1,000 to $1,200 per tonne per hectare. So it's quite lucrative too. Now, unfortunately, it is a host to the uh, plant parasitic root lesion nematode, Pradolinchus thornii. Um, it is also a host to the beneficial arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi and a host to Brady rhizobium, nitrogen fixing bacteria. So my research was looking at the interaction between these three organisms in mung bean and the implications to mung bean productivity. So a little bit about Pradolenchus. So Pradolenchus are the root lesion nematodes. You can see a lovely picture here courtesy, um, of Kirsty Owen here on the right hand side. Um, so Pradolenchus, um, the root lesion nematodes, they enter their migratory endoparasite. That means they enter and move into the plant root cells uh, and doing so they kill the cells and they form these characteristic reddish brown lesions on the plant. Um, this has an impact on root efficiency and it reduces the uptake of nutrients and of water to the plant. So you resulting in plants that look like they've got very poor vigor, um, they look quite wilted and you can get nutrient deficiencies. Now in our region, um, paddocks were surveyed and in, in the surveys undertaken, they found that 75% of paddocks had Pradolinchus thornii um, in the soils. So it's quite a big ubiquitous problem in our region. Uh, we know that mung bean is a susceptible host to Pradolinchus thornii. It can result in yield losses and also it can increase the multiplication of the plant parasite in the roots. Now this has a knock-on effect to any crop that's going to be grown next in the sequence. Um, if you get high levels of Pradolinchus thornii in the soil and in the roots of susceptible crops, you can lead, this leads to a greater yield loss. So another bit of information about uh, Brady rhizobium. So we know that mung bean is a nitrogen fixing legume. It associates with Brady rhizobium and uh, the commercial isolate that people use to inoculate mung bean in the field is CB1015. Surveys were done um, in 2005 um, in, the, uh, in the region and they found that uh, poor nodulation in mung bean resulted in a poor yield, in a yield reduction of up to 50%, especially where nitrate levels in the soil were already low. And they found that um, of the mung bean crops surveyed, about 50% were poorly nodulated or had a total failure to nodulate. And there's lots of um, implications about why this might happen. It may be the pH of the soil, it may be um, you know, the, um, the level of nitrate in the soil, but our hypothesis was is potentially poor nodulation. Could it be, have um, a reason in biology? Could it be due to a Pradolenchus thornii infestation or could it be due to a lack of arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi inoculum in the soil where mung beans grown? So a little bit about arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. These um, form a beneficial symbiosis with um, plants. About 80% of terrestrial plants form this symbiosis and it's a really ancient symbiosis. It is believed to have evolved about 450 million years ago. So what happens in this picture at the top here, you can see there's these lovely big fat golden spores here. Um, they'll germinate in the presence of a host and the hyphae then enter into the plant root cells and they form these tree-like structures called arbicels, which are found in the picture in here, it's stained in blue. Now these arbicels, they act as that point of exchange between the plant and the fungus. So the plant can actually delegate about 25% of its photosynthates to the, to the fungus in exchange for increased uptake of poorly mobile nutrients like phosphorus and zinc, and also increase the amount of water being uptake to the plant. So it's quite a beneficial symbiosis and they both win really. Now in the, in the literature, a lot of reports have been done looking at 
the interaction between AMF and rhizobia and if that had the level of positivity of that interaction in legumes. Um, so we wanted to research that interaction in mung bean. Um, also, um, mycorrhizal fungi have also been known to alleviate biotic stress caused by pathogens like bacteria and fungi. And there's a really nice review by WIPS in 2004, who goes through a lot of soil-borne bacteria and soil-borne uh, fungi and how AMF can actually alleviate some of the disease severity in the plants. And it's worthwhile having a look if you're interested. But also AMF can also alleviate biotic stress caused by plant parasitic nematodes. Now in the literature, it can, there's a bit of controversy. Sometimes it can decrease the population densities of the nematodes and sometimes it can increase it. Um, but we wanted to know what was the interaction in uh, with regards to Pradilenchus, the root lesion nematodes, and if AMF could be used as a biocontrol agent. Just a bit of um, a brief outline of the mechanisms potentially of, of this interaction. We know that AMF improves nutrient uptake to the plant. So potentially you may get an enhanced tolerance to nematode infestation because of this increased not uptake of nutrients. AMF can also improve the amount of roots being produced in the plant. So you can get a kind of like a damage compensation against the, um, the damage caused by the plant parasite. Now there may also be a competition within the plant roots for infection sites in the cortex. They both inhabit this really um, um, specialized, I suppose, uh, the ecological niche is very, very similar in, in the root cortex. So there could be a competition between them for host photosynthates or for infection sites. We wanted to find out if there was a competition between them. AMF can also alter interactions in the rhizosphere by uh, changing around the abundance and the populations of my, certain microorganisms in the rhizosphere and also changing around um, root exudates um, in, in the host plant. And also, um, it can also alter the plant's defense systems. So initially on infection by AMF, uh, the plant might perceive it as a pathogen and it primes the plant's immune system in what's called a mycorrhiza induced resistance. So that can prime the plant's defense mechanisms to make it more tolerant or resistant to uh, disease or, or nematode infestation. So we wanted to look at the interaction between these three organisms. Um, and what we did is we carried out some glasshouse factorial experiments in a split plot design. The first set of experiments looked at AMF and Pradilenchus thornii and rhizobia. And the second set of experiments, we added on some um, nutrients, plant nutrients into the equation. So we had a multifactorial experiment with AMF, P. thornii, rhizobia, nitrogen, phosphorus, and zinc. We used the cultivar JDAU, which has got the market share up here um, for mung bean. We also used a pasteurized vertisol, so that's it's the soil that um, we found quite commonly up here in the Northern Greens region. And there's some of the um, soil chemical properties are listed down below. So what we found the first question, what is the interaction between AMF and rhizobia? Well, we were getting this beautiful synergistic effect when you have co-inoculation with AMF and rhizobia together. There's a lot of graphs going on in this thing, but basically they all tell the same story. Um, if you can see my mouse, the black bar is no AMF, no rhizobia. Then you have with rhizobia, with AMF, and both together. So going through all the parameters that we were looking at, we found that AMF and rhizobia co-inoculated together, increased the shoot biomass, the seed yield, nodules in the plant and the nodule biomass in the plant. And this then had the the, implicate, or the, the further impact on improving the nitrogen fixation in mung bean. So we were getting, when you had AMF and rhizobia together, you were getting twice the amount of the NDFA. So this is the percentage of nitrogen derived from the atmosphere, which is a measure of biological nitrogen fixation. So we were getting twice the amount going on when we had AMF and rhizobia together compared to rhizobia alone, which had further impact on the amount of fixed nitrogen to the plant and the nitrogen uptake. And that's the kind of picture we were looking at. Um, this is the, the synergistic in, impact here. This is AMF and rhizobia. That's AMF, that's rhizobia, and that's nil. So you can see this beautiful boost to productivity. So it's likely that mycorrhizal fungi could help explain this nodulation failure problem that we've been seeing in mung bean. But we haven't taken P. thorny out of the equation. Um, in the first set of experiments, we were seeing that Pradilenchus thornii actually reduced nodule numbers in the plant at six weeks. Um, and that had an impact in slightly reducing the amount of fixed nitrogen to the plant and the nitrogen uptake to the, to the plant um, at 12 weeks. We also found that Pradilenchus thornii decreased the concentration in the shoot of phosphorus and zinc um, in plants that were inoculated with AMF and rhizobia. And unfortunately, we loved AMF and rhizobia and that interaction, but AMF actually increased the population density of Pradilenchus thornii. 
Um, so what we were finding here in these red boxes is this is the Pradolenka Thornia at 10 per gram initial uh, rate of inoculation without AMF. And that's your back transformed mean, so it's about 79. When you added AMF, you were actually getting this doubling, twice the amount of the population density of Pradolenka Thornii in mycorrhizal mung bean, which is not what we wanted to see, but that's what we got. And we correlated it with um, mycorrhizal root colonization and the concentration of phosphorus, copper, and zinc to the plant. That's what we initially correlated this, this response. And there was no correlation with root biomass. So this, we um, initially correlated it to plant nutrition. So we kind of wanted to tease that um, apart a bit more. So we did looked at uh, plant nutrients and their implications on the multiplication of Pradolinca thornii. So the second set of experiments, as I mentioned before, again, you are seeing this increase with AMF. So this is without AMF, this is with AMF in the polka dotted here. So you were getting this increase again, but when you added nitrogen alone, phosphorus or zinc, you were getting a decrease in the population densities of Pradolinca thornii. So the multiplication of P. thornii in the roots um, it's not based on nutrition and it's not based on root biomass. There was also no competition between the organisms. So when we looked at the percentage of mycorrhizal colonization in the roots um, using the stain, um, there was no, there was, P. thornii didn't really affect the mycorrhizal colonization. So we need to determine, it really needs to determine what mechanism is actually involved in causing this multiplication up of P. thornii in the roots. Um, it could be something to do with the reduced plant defense systems. So there's been a paper published by Fru et al in 2018, looking at another uh, species of root lesion nematode, Pradolinchus neglectus. And um, he looked at populations in wheat and found that mycorrhizal um, in inoculation reduced these plant defense uh, metabolites in wheat, which caused that multiplication. There could also be alterations to the rhizosphere um, that happens with AMF and that possibly is some kind of a a way of why how P. thornia is increasing, but that remains to be determined. Okay, so um, if you are a grower, and I've brought some of this research to, to mung bean growers, they, they all want to know is how to increase the AMF. Um, and you can, you can alter the populations of these organisms in the soil through careful crop rotations. So by growing a non-host of P. thornii, but also a crop that increases mycorrhizal fungi, like sorghum, linseed, sunflower, and pigeon pea, you can kind of um, manipulate the levels of these organisms in your soil. Now up here, fallows play a big role in um, crop rotations and fallows do reduce the population density of Pradolinchus thornii, but AMF is also an obligate biotroph, so it needs plant, a living plant host to survive on. So after fallows, which can go up from between you know, six to 18 months up here, um, you, uh, it's, it, because it's a summer dominant um, rainfall, it's depending on the summer dominant rainfall, um, so if they don't get the rains, no crops go in. So after fallows, you'll find that the population densities of AMF are actually really low. So to build up those populations, you can grow mycorrhizal host crops. So crops that have, um, that can, they're not too dependent on mycorrhiza for their nutrition or biomass, but they can still produce um, spores or inoculum in the soil for your subsequent crops that are high mycorrhizal dependency. So crops like, which have low mycorrhizal dependency could be like wheat or barley, but they'll still produce spores for your higher mycorrhizal dependency crops like mung bean. Also, more work and is being done on plant breeding to integress resistance to Pradolenchus thornii in mung bean. Um, and then while still maintaining those lovely benefits that we see with that association with the mycorrhizal fungi. So just quick conclusion, um, just wanted to reiterate those points again that AMF and rhizobia act synergistically, which improves nodulation, nitrogen fixation, plant biomass and seed yield. Um, but we have the problem in that AMF also increased Pradolinchus thornii population densities in mung bean, which wasn't correlated with nutrition or root biomass. We also know that Pradolinchus thornii can alter the nutrition in mung bean, uh, like phosphorus and zinc uh, nutrition and reduce the nodulation. And our soils are quite low in phosphorus and zinc, so if you have uh, further impacts on nutrient deficiencies in mung beans, that can, that can really play a, a role into your productivity of, of mung bean. And also, um, the interactions between these three organisms and then adding in nutrition, it can get really quite complex. <laughs> um, so I just want to say thank you very much to my supervisory team. That's Dr. Kirsty Owen, Professor John Thompson, Dr. Rebecca Zwart, Dr. Anna Marchuk, and thanks to the GRTC for a research scholarship and the USQ uh, RTP scholarship, everyone at the USQ crop nematology team, everyone at the Centre for Crop Health here in University of Southern Queensland, and, and the Leslie Research Facility and the DAF for the Glasshouse space. Um, so if you've got any questions, um, I'd like to hear them, please. Thank you for your time.